Dia Gwet, everyone, Kajima Tashi, and welcome back to episode number 65 of the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. Now, listen, lads, I know I look tired. I know I sound tired because it's 2.04 in the fucking morning on a Friday. This podcast was meant to go out two hours and four minutes ago, but I've literally just got off the fucking plane from Dublin, rocked up here, and recorded this intro. This podcast was meant to come out, but flight was delayed coming back. Because I was home, I was back in Belfast for the week, thus my guest on the podcast this week. This is a person I've wanted to get on for a very long time. I've been a huge fan of her. I found her in person actually and then followed her on social media, found out all her projects and just a fucking huge fan. I've tried to get her on for a while, which has actually been a blessing because in that time she's done more cool shit and we've got more things to talk about in the podcast, so we made for a better episode. So this week's guest is traditional Irish musician, member of Hurtan, Bird and Africa Sciences, and all-round fucking great girl, Mulu. It's a banging episode, lads. We chatted about Mulu's career, her various bands, we chatted about Irish artists for Palestine, amongst other things, and it is fucking lovely to hear another Belfast accent back on this podcast, and the first pure traditional Irish folk muse- musician on the podcast. Philippe Barnes does count, but you know he plays the silver flute and it's a different kind of thing. This is the first pure, pure, pure one. And it was filmed in my favourite fucking bar in all of Belfast. Now, if you ever go to Belfast, Madden's is the pub in Belfast. I don't say this lightly. It is not only my favourite pub in Belfast, it is the best pint of Guinness I've ever had in my fucking life. And that's not controversial to say. It is an historic pub. It's built into the fucking fabric of Belfast. It's a huge hub for live music too. And I'd honestly go as far to say it might be one of the best pubs in Ireland. So filming there was really cool for myself. So lads, go and enjoy the episode. And I will say, actually, on the note of Madden's, that's where I found Mulu. So next week, that's why this podcast has to get rushed out so quickly. And it's why I'm holding this fucking microphone like I'm in the who. Next Friday, so I think it's Friday the 4th of October, a week from today, is International Toot Your Flute Day. If you are in Belfast, go down the man's bar. There's going to be a load of really fucking good flute players, Mulu included. They'll be doing a session. It's a Friday night. You're going to get like 11 flutes. That's where I found Mulu. This time last year, I walked in the man's for a couple of pints and there was 11 flutes. It's like, what the fuck's going on here? Talk to her. This is how it's all happened. It's a great day. You're getting... Great world class flute players in the best bar in the fucking city, in the best city in the world. What more could you fucking want? So, if you're about next week in Belfast, go down to that. And if you're not, do something else for International Toot Your Flute Day. So, that's why this podcast is getting out quick. Now, quickly, I'm going to let you sit free in the episode, but you know I've got my usual thing to do. So, skip ahead if you're a regular listener. But if not, the n g podcast is free and always will be free. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address. And for the audio listeners, it is patreon.com forward slash the Inline G Flute Podcast. It costs five quid a month, lads. And with that, you're keeping the podcast alive. You get four episodes of this podcast every month, every fucking Friday. I'm here. It's 2 8 in the morning. I'm here. I'm turning up. If you listen to all those episodes, you think, fuck, I'd love to buy Gareth a drink to say thank you, I buy him a pint. You can do so for a fiver. That's not, that wouldn't even get you a fucking pint these days, to be honest. I do everything around here on my own. As you know, it's a fully independent podcast. So being a patron helps generate a regular income for the podcast and also makes sure that I get paid for my work as an artist, which is a fucking class feeling. So, lads, if you can afford to donate that money, please do. You don't get that many benefits, to be totally honest. That's not the idea. The system is just to support my work. But you will get a trading card. You'll get a couple of free episodes or early episodes. You'll get free episodes. Everyone gets free episodes. You get early episodes and a couple of other little things where you get to connect to me a little bit more on a personal level. But basically, you're supporting the podcast. You're paying a five a month to keep it alive. And you can jump in and out whenever you want, okay? So if you can afford it, please subscribe over there. It makes a huge fucking difference. Thank you to the patrons over there. And if you can't afford it, that's grand. You can keep listening for free. And lastly, don't forget about the merchandise. Check out the Instagram link, my Instagram bio, the link. There's all the lovely new Inline G merchandise. Or you can go to garethhewson.com and find the Inline G page and find the merchandise. T-shirts, tote bags, they're fucking gorgeous. I got a Belfast designer grad to do the design. The idea was I wanted T-shirts that you could wear in a nightclub or you could wear to your practice room. They're fucking lovely. Go and check them out. They're beautiful. Anyway, right, guys, here is this week's Inline G Flute Podcast live from Madden's Bar in lovely Belfast with the mythical Mulu. I see. The first thing I will start with straight away is you're just back from Brittany. Just back from Brittany, yeah. Tell us what were you doing in Brittany? I was overstaying with a flute player called Sylvain Barou. Yeah. He's one of my favorite flute players of all time. He's a traditional flute player, but plays a lot of traditional Breton music as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I got a bit of funding to go over. 
Um, yeah, I know. An excuse to go to Brittany for the week. And then, yeah, you just like go in with him all day, every day playing tunes. Yeah, we did. He taught me a lot of Breton tunes, um, a lot of Rides, um, a lot of Gavats, tunes okay. like that. Yeah, because that's the first thing I want. Like, I don't know much about Breton music. Um, I know the language is very similar to Welsh, isn't it? And it's, Celtic. it's very similar to Welsh because it's Brittany itself is a Celtic nation yeah. as well. Like a lot of people over there. The region that Sylvan lives in and that we stayed in, it's like a Gaeltacht area. Like, oh, really? Yeah, so they speak you, Breton all the yeah, time? Yeah, if you went into the shops oh, and class. stuff, they'd be able to speak with you in Breton. Wow, did you learn any from when yeah. you were there? The only thing I remember is Nosvat, which means good night. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful as well. It's nothing like Irish then, is it? No, no. Okay. No, so it's a Celtic language as well and it's very similar to Welsh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I had a friend once, I don't know if I can say her name in the pot, I'm sure well, I haven't talked to, her, talked to her in 10 years, but mm-hmm. her name was, her surname was Henaf which is obviously Welsh as fuck, mm. but she was from Brittany. And her, her, the year she was born, I think she was born in 93, was the first year that it was legal to give your children a non, or to give them a Breton name. Before that, it was illegal to give your children a first name that was Breton. Do you know what else is sure the same as being here? We're Sean's, we're John's. You couldn't give your yeah, child an Irish true. name. Yeah, it was the same, yeah. Yeah, I know it's mad, but yeah, Breton music. How does it differ from Irish music? For the layman, for the uneducated person, for, such, as, well, such as myself. <laughs> I'm also uneducated. That was my first, like, I love Breton music so much. Like, yeah. it's fucking beautiful. I just, okay. it's so hypnotic. It's very repetitive. Okay. Um, okay. They, it base it off a lot of dances. So they have the re day. Yeah, they, like, dancing is way more common over there than Irish okay. dancing is over here. And yeah. it's more like communal. So the music's made to go with dancing, generally speaking, yeah. Most of it, yeah. There's obviously a load of exceptions, but um, a lot of it is to play with dances. Yeah. So the, the Rides are dances, Gavats are dances, they've got yeah. the Plin as well, I think. Um, and it's a very community-based thing in terms of the okay. dancing, whereas Irish dancing is more like dancing for people. I ah, performative, um, yeah. Yeah, it's more like in a big circle with people. Oh, and, okay, like a Keeley kind of style, yeah, yeah. something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different feels to the music, like the time signatures and stuff are, okay. are quite strange. They do a lot of stuff in like sixes as opposed okay. to six eight and. We learned Ooh. a couple of tunes in fives as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, so, and it's just very repetitive. Yeah. In a hypnotic kind of way. Okay. Also, one interesting thing is they don't really name the tunes. Okay. So, like so. a lot of the gavats and stuff will just be called gavat one, two, three. Oh, four. really? Okay. Yeah. Whereas, like, I in bet that'll go up a while, then, won't it? You get yeah, the hundreds, gavat yeah. five hundred and sixty-four. <laughs> but there's. Um, <laughs> Whereas like tunes here, like people name tunes in Irish music yeah. all the time. I have usually, some great names for them as well. Usually after something funny that happens. Exactly, like yeah. The week that Paddy was sick on himself. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> that's a great one. That, that's a good that, one okay, for your okay. next tune, actually, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's strange they, they don't name them. Or else you'll know the tunes as who plays them. Okay. The musician that plays them then, they'll just name For who's them most well known for playing yeah, it then, okay. pretty much. Yeah, and yeah. the style of flute playing... Again, talk to me as if I'm a total beginner here. Explain to me as if I'm five. But <laughs> the the actual flutes they play over there, similar to an Irish flute, totally the same. They're similar to an Irish flute. I actually play a Breton flute. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Um, a guy called Stefan Morvan. He's an incredible maker from. I think his workshop is just outside Lorient. We actually okay. visited his workshop when I was over. Okay. Did you get a new flute? Uh, no, but I left my flute with him, and he's fixing it at the okay. minute. Okay. Okay. Um, because there's a couple of bits and pieces that need to touch up on it. Lovely. Um. But it's bored slightly different. So okay. uh, the the mouthpiece on it in Irish, in Irish flute makers would make it quite round. Okay. Whereas it's bored in Brittany where the, the uh, hole is like more of an oval shape. So your embouchure has to change. I would have to open up a little bit more then, would it? Yeah. 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 Okay, but, uh, but interesting. It, the tone from the flute that I have is incredible. Like it's, yeah. it's really, really full and loud. And Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you reckon you could hear the difference? Like if you heard a flute, you could say, oh, that's a Breton flute. I don't know if I could. It's not that obvious but, a difference. Uh, but I could definitely, if someone was playing a Stefan Morvan made flute, okay. I would be able to tell. Ah, that would have been a great test I could have done if I brought one. <laughs> ah, I'm not that organised. Okay, and then the style of music, like, uh-huh. when you're going over there, is the ornamentation all that kind of stuff different over there? Totally different, yeah. yeah. Like, they wouldn't use a lot of, like, taps and stuff. Also, I am quite new to this, and if I say anything wrong, then don't... don't. Oh, there's a lot of wrong things in this <laughs> yeah. podcast. You will not be the first one. But uh, they don't, like... What were some of the things I was learning? Like, uh, I don't know, this isn't really typically Breton style but Sylvan 
he uh, does, does these interesting things like uh, he'll do like a seed natural like there's a way to do it stronger than okay like, on the Irish flute it can be quite weak if you don't have the key for it yeah, yeah. Um, a way to do it stronger and do like vibrato on it and stuff oh and, they like, do vibrato as well yeah, okay. yeah yeah okay um, with their with their fingers or fingers and the throat as okay. well is a big thing okay. over there yeah Right, an Irish flute playing. Do we use flute, throat vibrato, or do you finger vibrato? No, usually <laughs> finger vibrato. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, never. Yeah, but they use that. a lot okay. of k- 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 like. Ah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we do in classical flute players. We only use the. Oh right, yeah, yeah. We would do a lot. Like if you're playing a G, kind of. Weird. Ah, you find one where it's not quite a yeah, semitone or something. Because you yeah. use the buttons. Yeah, we have a lot of buttons yeah. on our foot, yeah. We have a lot of buttons on our so foot, yeah. so we have the holes, like, it's easier to, because the air is coming out to go, to do vibrato like that. True. Yeah, yeah. It does sound nice as well. Like, I know when I do Irish music on my silver flute, that's one of the tricks I've picked up, is to do vibrato with the, with nice. the fingers. It's one of those ones. Yeah, you can, it's, it's good when you have the crossover information. It is. You can in, in, yeah. incorporate different styles. Yeah, there's one guy, I actually haven't on the podcast, I don't know if you're familiar with him, a guy called Philippe Barnes. No, um, I'm, I'm not he's recorded sure, a couple right? of albums. He's an amazing trad player, but he studied in Limerick. He's English. I think his family are Breton, but he studied in Limerick and he only had a silver flute when he went over. Okay, so he just had yeah. to learn everything on a silver flute. And suddenly he can play it. Like it sounds like an Irish flute when he plays, but it's a pure Boehm system, modern flute. So he's wrote a book on how to do it. Wow. And it's so fascinating to try to play on that style on a silver flute because it's fucking hard as well yeah, like it takes a lot imagine. of air to play in an Irish style on a silver flute yeah yeah but then Irish flutes are a fucking nightmare as well well there's um, the famous flute player from Fluke that plays the silver flute as oh, well Brian Brian Finnegan yeah or no no he's is, the whistle player but oh, yeah. the flute player um, forgive me maybe I'm wrong oh no I know her name but I forgot she plays an alto flute Sarah it is Sarah Sarah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but she's fucking unreal flute but uh, wildly she, she doesn't like play like Irish style like, necessarily but she's she's class but yeah doesn't she am I right saying she stands on one leg as well sometimes yeah yeah, she, that... yeah she's like got that iconic kind of like puts her foot on her knee yeah thing, and like, like a flamingo nearly yeah yeah, yeah she's class did your man do that as well and Jethro Tull or am I making that up I don't know I actually I'm not sure but possibly yeah possibly. we'll say maybe we'll leave yeah, it we'll say that. no yeah. we'll say yes yeah yeah because yeah, the style <laughs> difference is always something that fast me in the Irish music because mm-hmm. I run these small sessions over in Cologne and you get these lads from Germany coming over and like when Germans do a hobby they fucking do a hobby like they commit to it so uh, they'll yeah. go to like Kerry or they'll go to different parts of Ireland every summer and study it for years um, but they'll okay. be very into like the styles of playing but none of them ever make it up here the Belfast so I've tried to like research about like what the Belfast style of playing is in yeah. terms of Irish music haven't really got an answer to it to be totally honest is there a Belfast style of playing of traditional yeah music? of traditional playing well uh, flute playing especially I guess there's a flute player called Harry Bradley he's amazing yeah he plays like very choppy and like almost like staccato like playing okay. quite breathy. Okay. Like I did for my grades have to learn about the regional flute styles and I can't really ah. remember what it was. A regional up here, would that be just Ulster or would there be Belfast specific? I mean Belfast specific, I mean, there's so many great Belfast Belfast flute players yeah. and they all play quite differently like Brendan Mulholland and Harry Bradley oh, Brandon and Gary class. Duffy yeah Brendan Mulholland's he's class yeah I saw him yeah, yeah. a gig once a year ago he's amazing yeah. so you should get him on the podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> his CD is for sale in Madden's Bar there you are <laughs> and they sell it down here yeah yeah see that is a fucking curse in pubs I was saying earlier there's nothing worse because when I come home <laughs> and I have a few pints and they say anything behind the bar I'm like here take it that's it t-shirts CDs I'll have them all but anyway there you are you can get it there yeah um, sorry continue um, um, so yeah. Belfast style play yeah yeah, but I, I think Harry Bradley's somebody that's like very iconic in the Belfast scene and he yeah he is like a very like choppy staccato type playing okay and I don't maybe that is the, the style up here I'm not too sure because there's so many different players but yeah. he's definitely somebody that I would think would be iconic in terms of playing up here so okay a very but strong tones and that I've heard mm-hmm. once or twice when I've read some places very almost I did get a quote from it, but I think I removed it. Um, yeah. But it was something about the style being like very almost harsh. And I yeah, thought that seems yeah, a bit yeah. unfair. I don't know, but then I d- I understand that though as well. Yeah. But is that one of those things? Maybe you know where you stereotype the people so much that you hear that <laughs> and they're playing. Maybe yeah. Because yeah, we say that about Grumpy French players. Well. Yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah, that's an awful stereotype of Belfast people. <laughs> isn't I know we're um, all fucking so sorry. Oh yeah, we're so lovely up here. Yeah, we actually are. To be fair, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, Man's Bar. We should talk about that just while I'm on him. Yes. Because we are in Man's. Yeah. <laughs> I've recorded one, two episodes of the Sunflower. 
but I never got nice. to get in the man's before because mm. it's such an iconic bar in Belfast. It's yeah. one of those places you really have to know people to get into here. Like it's, <laughs> I feel quite honoured that I'm recording a podcast at man's because for me it is like the bar here. Yeah, and they have a lot of live Irish. Well, you play in here quite a lot, don't you? Ooh. As much as I can, yeah. And we've got a session coming up next week. Maybe we go uh, down and talk about it. We've got the the special session. The special. Yes. Well, we should talk about this because this was so fun. So I came over. I came over here last year just for a trip. I had a German friend over actually as well at the time and we walked in the man's for a couple of pints and I was like, oh, I think there's a session on that in here about live music and I walked in there was 11 fucking flute players and I was like, what the fuck is going on in here, man? 11 flute players yeah. and then I heard you shouting across, oh, no, it's international to your flute player. I was like, ah, there we are. And actually, do you know what I got designed at the time and I totally forgot about this? It was okay, so it was one of the early attempts because my podcast was just running and it was mm-hmm. one of my early attempts to start doing merchandise not the best idea I've ever had. I got these uh, personalised condoms made Oof. that said toot my flute with a question mark on it. I thought, that's so funny. Everyone's going to love that. Mm-hmm. People didn't find it very funny. <laughs> it really sh- overshot. I was going to hand them out and I thought, you can't hand out condoms. You look like a fucking I weirdo. Think people are past that. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but I remember just sticking in my head going, oh, toot your flute day. <laughs> so that's next week here. That's what you associate it with. Yeah, then? well, this podcast will be out in time as well for international toot your flute day yeah so international toot your flute day is next october 4th which is next friday yeah so we're having our annual session in madden's bar Belfast. friday night as well of all i nights. know yeah because it's it's the first friday that we've had it That's class. yeah so it's gonna be great um we've got some special guests coming in local oh, really? flute players like so it's gonna be great it starts at six o'clock okay yeah yeah and how long do you reckon it'll go on for it could go on all night who knows yeah. <laughs> the sessions go on all night here sometimes yeah they do yeah if they're good enough crack yeah <laughs> yeah what's all night like how long can you go for i don't know till about 12 or so there is a session happens up the stairs at nine okay so we might keep going down the stairs so who knows or else we'll come up and join the other session oh, so it could be two sessions running at once mm-hmm. yeah yeah hell. yeah yeah, international to your flute day. So there you are. If you're in Belfast, that's something to definitely be getting on. 100%. Although you did tell me as well that it's not actually a flute thing. Technically. It's technically not. I broke my heart. A flute thing. I know. I know. I don't want to break anyone's heart. Yeah. I just uh, looked up a few years ago. Is there an international flute day? And I couldn't find anything on it. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Someone can correct me. But oh, I'm sure. Actually, yeah. That's someone will listen to this podcast. Someone will listening will be able to. If there's national but, um, flute day, But yeah. I couldn't see anything. The only thing that came up for me was international toot your flute day, which is on October fourth every year, and it's international like blow your own horn day, like yeah. you know, be buzzing about yourself. Kind yeah. Of thing. Which yeah. is not the same as playing an actual flute. Well, but fuck sure. it, then it's an excuse for a big flute session. Exactly, there you are. Yeah, beautifully put. Yeah. yeah, and if there's another international flute day that someone can let me know about, then we can have a flute oh, session on that day. It must be. I know. I'd heard of international flute, took your flute day as well before that, though. I, yeah, I th- I, I've heard of people doing flute events Maybe on that's that what, day. Maybe yeah. They've just so hijacked people, it. So people have kind of hijacked it, but like there's an international ill and piping day. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's an international fiddler val in day as well, but there's no international flute day that I know of. No, I could be wrong, but I don't oh. think so. Where's the twelfth? There, yeah, but the twelfth so doesn't really. Not quite the same. Not international either, is it? The 12th? International five day. Yeah, not quite the same. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there you are. If anyone's in Belfast or anywhere with international to your flute day, please do something and let me know about because I'm so curious. I don't know what I'll do for it then. Yeah, put a stick up or something online. Maybe or it like, should. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. I'd love to put some more Irish stuff up as well. Yeah, I love playing Irish music. It makes me so fucking happy playing Irish oh, music. Oh, it's the best. It's so good for you. Yeah. The one thing I struggle with though is, and I've, I've got a lot of things I want to pick your brain about in general, but being mm. a trap player because I dabbled in it. You know, I've had a bit of crack with it, but I, I'm still amazed how trap players go into sessions and they have like 250 tunes just <laughs> memorized. <laughs> like, how many tunes do you reckon you have in your head now, roughly? I don't know. Maybe more than 250. Seriously, <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. There's a lot of melodies are quite similar. Yeah. So. You be, you can pick them up really quickly, yeah. and once you're you've learned Irish music for a few years, you start to be able to piece together tunes in a session. Yeah, if okay. someone's playing something, then you kind of listen and go, oh yeah, I kind of know I that. And we that, yeah. obviously, I mean, Irish music is a traditional music, and traditional music is orally passed down, so True. we yeah. learn mostly from our ears. Yeah, so your ears get kind of trained up to just be able to learn tunes. So you could learn. Loads of tunes in in one day off by heart, you know. And when you're a kid, like learning it for the first time, do you learn straight away from ear? Some people do. Like I started off learning by ear when my mom taught okay. me, and then when I went to the cultists, yeah, they would give us like notes. We would read like G A B. Oh, literally written out. Literally just, yeah. written out, yeah. yeah. But 
you kind of do a mix of both and then I just think that you just go off and learn by ear naturally oh, after fair. That. yeah because I'm always just curious how you start learning by ear Is but you just... must be able to to learn by ear as well I think that's the curse of classical music is when you're picking it up you never learn that skill Fuck. out of all the skills you learn that's one that you don't learn Fuck, I'm starting to train yeah. myself to, it's it's not even the by ear it's the confidence mm. sort of just to just to wing it yeah, yeah. just go fuck up we'll see what happens yeah because yeah. you know, when you're mm. when you're classical musician you're so trained about perfection is the it's the be all and end all of everything you cannot play wrong notes you cannot play out of tune you can't fuck it up fuck that and you're then, yeah, fine like I know when you go to play Irish music it's great because you play but I've never done like a session or a gig in Irish music where someone's come up and went, excuse me that was meant to be an F sharp <laughs> not an F natural see like sessions are such a beautiful thing because it's people can come in and just at any time of the day that the session's happening join in and play a tune if they want to yeah you know it's not it do, and it doesn't have to be perfect you might get the odd session and some people that want to play a specific way but mostly it's an open session and people yeah. can come in and they can sit with their instrument the fiddle the whistle the flute whatever and they can kind of tipple away and listen and learn and yeah. that, that's how you learn Irish music you know that's how you sit and you learn tunes and it's an amazing skill to be able to learn like yeah, it really is. And then, would you recommend if someone's picking up Irish music, as apart from sessions, just going and listening to tunes and trying to play along with them? A hundred percent. Best way to do it. A hundred percent. That's Stick where I learned. Spotify and that's where I learned so much of my music was sticking CDs on, sticking, just giving it a lash. Yeah, and giving it a lash, and you just sit and try and play along with it, and yeah. Even for ornamentation, all that as well. You just want to listen to it and go. Ornamentation. Maybe you would need to sit down more with somebody, and they could talk you through it or walk you through okay. it um, if you want to do it correctly yeah. but like but you can pick that stuff up from videos and stuff as well you know ornamentation I think is the hardest bit for me to sort of pick up on and playing trap music I can get like I can memorize a tune no problems and I can play them but the variety of ornamentation it's such an art yeah. and I'm like fuck and I think it's one of those things if I try to study it and like write out what I'm trying to do and practice it it doesn't really work. Yeah. It becomes too obsessive. I think it is just if Irish music is a lot of feeling as well, you know. And yeah. if you're like, you can write things out, obviously, but yeah. it's better to just feel in the tune where it goes without sounding like too like. I like that though. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just fuck it. Just do it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Because um, everyone plays differently. Everyone has different styles, and and I love that about Irish music that everyone yeah. has their different styles and plays differently. It is. It's so cool as well. Yeah, mm. I love going to sessions in different countries as well. I've never jumped into a session though, apart from the ones. You should. Like you I should. have a session in Cologne, but it's very straight. It's like it's sort of for classical musicians. I've never came to the Belfast right. one. Fuck it, I'll give it a lash. Yeah. So what's the crack with your session in Cologne? Is it a classical music session? Not or? really. No, no, it's an Irish session. But mostly like. But a lot of the players, players come and... from a classical background. Yeah. Okay. So they want to. Try, so they're technically brilliant. They can play mm. anything. But they either need sheet music or they have to read the sheet music and memorize it from there. Fuck, that is mad. Which is totally different. It, then you get the Germans coming in who do, like, probably do it. Yeah, that's a great skill to have, though. Like, I can read music, but I could not, like, uh, sheet music. Yeah. But I couldn't read it up to speed at all. Really? I haven't okay. done it in years. Like, you know. That's I've, mad. You, you haven't used sheet music in years? No. <laughs> See, that's, I'm so jealous. Like, fuck, I'd love to not use sheet music. It is. That's a great skill to have as well, though. I'm not putting down yeah. being able to read music. But it is, it's very freeing to just have your instrument and that's it. To it not is. have to have that in front of you, you know, it's great. Yeah, I even noticed that, but even when you play classical music and you just memorise it, mm -hmm. it's so much more fun. And yeah. it's so much more freedom and you can express a lot more. Yeah, because like 100% um, of the time when I'm playing Irish music, I have my eyes closed. Oh, do you? Do you play with your eyes closed all yeah, the time? Just, yeah, and everyone's different. Some people focus on part of the wall, but you just really get into the zone of it. And you obviously do with classical yeah. music as well, but I think it's a different kind of vibe and world to be in when you've got your eyes closed and you're just kind of it's great yeah, yeah. I think that's pure musicianship as well it's pure mm. music making yeah. I think the fear of classical music is if it's especially like a really complicated piece it's like 12 minutes long mm. and you just forget where you are and you just go ah fuck I've done that before where I've been playing through it and went not a fucking clue where I am now <laughs> just forgot and then you have to sort of look at it I always have the music as a safety net yeah but I think in Irish music that doesn't really happen does it like you change your tunes but you wear you change your tunes yeah like maybe you would do three or four tunes in a set and then you would go up after you play each tune maybe four three four five times yeah. depending on how you're feeling have you ever just forgot the tune have you ever got lost in a gig or anything i've got went, ah, I, I probably have gotten lost in a gig of how many times i've played a tune okay like if you've organized how many times you're gonna play something 
Like say you play the first tune three times. Yeah. And sometimes if you you've got your eyes closed and you get lost in it, you might think, "Fuck." Have I did I, two or three. Yeah. If <laughs> I play this two or three times, so then you can kind of just hold a note and see what someone else does and go, "Okay, we're gonna do." Okay. It. Okay. That's not too bad though. You've never just like blanked or anything. No. 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 Okay. No. It's, it's the beauty of learning a tune off by heart. You don't Once really, you know it, it go anywhere, you yeah. really know it. Yeah. 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 I know I've heard people say that. Yeah. Someone said that to me recently as well. Like, oh yeah, it's just like riding a bike. And I was like, fuck, I can't ride a bike. <laughs> I never learned how to ride a bike. So that didn't help me at all. Well, then but you're fucked. Yeah, I am. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> but also then, just like, what time is it now? It's half five, right? About 45 minutes before we get down here. Hmm. Her Tam, your yes. band, yeah. have congratulations for, Thank and I never get this right. You're shortlisted. You went from the long list to the shortlist and yeah. you won the public vote for best album or best single? Best live act. Best live act? Yes. Oh, even better. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah, because Nika put in that category as well, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah so it went down, I think, there, it's now down to four. Uh, I think it's down to Chalk, Problem Patterns, Kneecap, and then and ourselves. Yeah. yeah, they're all like amazing bands. That is, yeah, that's a yeah. great list to be a part of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think. Hurtan for anyone that doesn't know us which I mean we're only kind of started the last year and a half or so so I'll forgive people for not knowing who we are yeah but, <laughs> but okay it's, how it's, would you describe Hurtan if you were to so our genre is tradtronica yes so it's traditional music and electronic music but can I ask is that an actual genre or is that are you guys the first we're the first okay it's, okay because when i google yeah. tradtronic i was like i'm not seeing a lot of this <laughs> but yeah we be it is hard to describe you guys because i've watched you're yeah. fucking class by the yeah, way i adore thank it you. <laughs> but i would struggle to describe what it is yeah we we um so it's tradtronic music we sing a lot of shadow songs yeah. um that were collected by a lot by katrina grimman a few by myself um and we focus on the music of our ancestors. Yeah. And we've also kind of taken on these personalities and um, taken on the word Hurtan as well. Hurtan, it's an old Owen word for Hawthorne. Yeah. And it means like the horror and the harmony. So we kind of embody that in the act as well, where I'm all dressed in black and Katrina on yeah. accordions all in white. And Stephen is and Ray Hafian, which is the... Uh, the Fenian ram. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so, and... Um, the and ram have, head thing is class. Yeah, yeah. So and it's... A, we're very pagan and yeah. um, pagan aesthetic and and we play the music of our ancestors. And yeah, that kind of pagan thing. ancestors. And we're going right back to that level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, right yeah, Oum, it's not a language I know a huge amount about, but that's sort of the predecessor of the Irish, essentially, is it? it I mean, it's... You find Oum written down in Newgrange and stuff like that. Like, it's one of the... I think one of the first languages that was ever discovered here. Wow, it's okay. Not, I've, it's not ever spoken. It's just written down. Oh, ah, okay. Kind of just like a line down and then different okay. letters across and stuff like that. Ah, so it's never spoken then? It's all just a written language mm. or more or less, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's class. And yeah, Tradtronica then. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that exactly means then in terms of the music. Yeah, so it's a fusion of Irish songs and I guess Stephen our DJ and Ray Hafian he puts all these incredible beats and stuff behind it so we all like love Irish music and love Shano's singing and love partying so it's a fusion, it's of, a fusion of all, those all of those things yeah yeah I know yeah. I was watching a couple of the videos of it as well it looked amazing yeah you'll have yeah. to come to one of I know days. I think the last time I was home I'd missed we was playing the black box at some point that I think was I just missed la that yeah last Christmas time yeah yeah like I think I just missed that mm -hmm. fuck when's your next gig? We have a gig coming up on the 30th of October. It's oh, gonna be night before Halloween. A night before Halloween, so yeah. yeah. And it's kind of Samhain themed. Um, it's in the Empire in Belfast. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. Is it just yourselves or is there other acts on? Uh, so it's, we're headlining it, obviously, and then yeah. we've got Whale and She on before us. Gosh. Yeah, amazing sibling duo that okay. do... Um, like old folk songs and channel songs as well. And like the when you're on stage, you guys have like choreography and that kind of stuff, or is it? Yeah, it's core. The whole set is choreographed more or less. It's a lot of work as well. Like, yeah, it? yeah. There, we've got two amazing, amazing. Sorry, like uh, Shioga, like our little furries, um, Anna and Mihal. Mihal okay. is the choreographer. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so he's yeah. We kind of all because there's five of us moving yeah. in motions together and That's kind wild. of try to tell the story of the songs as well through the performance. So. Okay, so each song has its own choreography then as well mm -hmm. yeah, yeah wow yeah. fucking hell okay so yes you have to come and see it yes i <laughs> want to come see it man that sounds class yeah yeah, yeah i was yeah because 
I originally wrote these questions like a while ago, and mm. then I, I forgot to update them. To be totally honest, um, but I got yeah. I think the thing I got was yeah. Hurtaner Belfast based hires the Tradtronic group to sing the Irish language. Our goal is to take ancient and endangered Irish traditional songs and put them in the context of electronic dance music to share them with a modern audience. I li- I read that before I listened to you guys. I was like, <laughs> fuck. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Whatever that is, I want it, man. I'm so into that. <laughs> yeah, and then the Irish news said a trad band that taps into our pagan past. Yeah, that is. I love all that stuff. Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not something I've ever really read about or got too into Irish like paganism I haven't mm. went that far back I actually thought they used the flute a lot more back then I was quite disappointed to find out the flute's relatively new to Ireland no, no it's the same with Breton music as well the only kind of oh, came really? in there in like the 1960s 1950s the 1960s 60s? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shite, they had an older almost oh no I was going to say fife type thing but I actually don't think that's correct okay uh, but they had an older f- older type wooden flute as well but it wasn't okay. played it, oh they found it in the pocket of a few soldiers in Brittany in the 1920s ah, okay. I think it was a five type instrument um, but yeah there's a few flute players in the 1950s that brought that style of flute there so but like the style of flute, like a transverse flute like not like a whistle yeah yeah like it was the side yes okay yeah. Mm-hmm. okay yeah, I know that, that broke my heart because I thought it, it was, I can't remember what I was researching. It was something in Irish music I was researching. I thought, oh yeah, I'm sure the pagans were using flutes. I was like, no. Mm. Apparently, most of they Irish They were mythology, busy casting spells. Yeah, they had shit, shit to be at. Yeah. They had shit to be at. But I feel like a flute's great for casting a spell. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, have you got to be casting spells? You need a flute, or at least a whistle. <laughs> yeah. You know, you need something. Do you play a whistle as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it's the exact same fingering, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's easy enough. Um, mostly most people would start out on the whistle and then go on to the flute I was going to ask about that yeah so generally you would start on the whistle then yeah. when's the point where you go right time to switch the flute probably the when you get tall enough the whole one. Oh, really is yeah, that what it is yeah lots of uh, traditional musicians start when they're like literally about five six seven yeah years old. very well yeah um, probably the same as classical music you know but the whistle yeah. is small enough that you can start it I'm pretty sure I've seen like four-year-olds play the whistle before. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so yeah, then you would maybe graduate on to another instrument. Okay. And yeah, I think I started playing the flute when I was about nine or ten, so maybe. So you whistle first as well then, Whistle you? first, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like these days like there's some incredible whistle players out there where they're playing like, yeah. it feels a little bit, a bit of a shame to say we graduate or we move on to the flute because the whistle's such a cool instrument in itself. Um, yeah, it's you're right level. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware of that's how it goes because I remember... Like, one of the first people that ever got me into Irish music was Brian Finnegan. Brian Finnegan like, is just otherworldly. Like, it's he's stupid. fucking amazing. Have you yeah. ever met him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you gigged with him? Uh, I haven't gigged with him, no. Not to oh, my yeah. recollection. Let okay. me make sure I'm not getting this wrong. Because we did do a gig on the same night. Okay. Um, okay. For an Irish artist for Palestine gig in Castle Wellen. Okay. Yeah. Was that recently then, was it? It was last December, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But never played with him, I don't think. Could be wrong. Okay. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Yeah. We can delete this if we have to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Irish artist for Palestine. This is something I have to talk about as well. Absolutely, yeah. Because, well, I'm wearing my jersey. You love the jersey, well. yeah. You know, this is the kind of thing I cannot get away with wearing in Germany. I get <laughs> so much shit for it, but... Oh, fuck. Well, Germany's a different kettle of fish at the it minute. It is like. a wee bit, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to... Co- well, no, fucking comment and everything, but... Yeah, it's not the kind of thing we talk about openly in Germany, certainly in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when we run the sessions, we do make a point of saying that, like, you can wear Palestine tops, you can bring Palestine flags, you can show your support because you're in an Irish pub with an Irish community. Mm-hmm. And we're obviously, I think most of my listenership in this podcast is American or Canadian. They have a kind of similar attitude towards it, you know, yeah, a bit bury more. your head in the sand and then you come back to Belfast like, fuck, it's a different beast over here. It is a different beast, I think, because people in Belfast were in a similar situation where they were being under yeah. British rule and um, being oppressed essentially by yeah by a governing authority and they needed the help of people around the world in yeah. order to squash that when the yeah. troubles were going on so they can people here just can feel what the Palestinian people are going through at the minute and that's why people here are so passionate about it they it's, really are yeah it's not just out of thin air that people are passionate about Palestine here since October 7th it's been that people oh, have, it's been years, it's, yeah. Yeah, and it's because people here went through the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, the other day, I took, me and my girlfriend, we went down just to walk about the west of Belfast, mm-hmm. go out in the falls and check all that, and I was like, fuck, from the start of the falls up to the Kennedy Center, so like a 45-minute walk, I lost count of the amount of Palestine flags I saw, and I was like, yeah. fuck, you would never see this in Germany. Yeah. You would never see one, like, and even in England, though, you would never see it, but Ireland's so forward with its support for Palestine. Yeah. It's lovely, 
it's because much needed because it's not really coming from enough places across the world at all and that's yeah. why it's important to talk about it yeah i think we're one of the few western countries that's made a very clear stance on it being supportive of it yes. and there is a lot of these gigs as well i've seen a lot in belfast as well the you know irish artists for palestine or mm-hmm. belfast artists for, have you done a few of them then yeah i have yeah it's a couple of friends of mine shout out to brandy lochran and claire lochran and other people involved in irish artists for palestine yeah but they organize a huge amount of gigs here um, and it was kind of when the government weren't taking a stance on anything and it was kind of a big fuck you yeah. that the yeah. amount of artists and creatives people over here that stand for Palestine yeah. they're going to do something anyways regardless of what you are going to do yeah. right now yeah. and how's the reception been to the gigs and stuff incredible yeah. incredible it just shows how strong and passionate the people are here yeah. um, and how resilient yeah. they are as well yeah, they, I'm delighted about that yeah it's so nice to be able to talk about it as well. Mm-hmm. I think when I talked to you originally about this, I was saying it's something I would love to just get onto because yeah. you're always skirting around it when you're talking with Americans and stuff. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a difficult thing to bring up sometimes or a difficult thing to talk about because some people are so brainwashed like, yeah. by the media and I, the biased media. Like, Yeah, it's nice to be able to talk about it. And at the end of the day, it's do you want to see thousands of people being killed or do yeah. you not? Yeah, you know, I know, and I think as artists, we do have a little bit of a role to play in that, or a pretty significant role, mm. because we can affect people's thinking and we can bring attention to things. We have a platform, and yeah, yeah, I've heard this argument a few times, like, oh, you're an artist, just stick to the art, but no, like especially I... when you're in Belfast, and everything's politicized here. Yeah, I think you do have a duty if you have any kind of platform to to use it to stop human beings being murdered. Yeah. Like that's as simple as it is, yeah. and it's not any one side of any story it's I just don't want anybody to yeah. be fucking murdered that's yeah. it that's yeah. all I'm saying yeah, yeah and 100%. that's all anybody's saying yeah I yeah. know it's nice and yeah especially in Ireland we uh like you think of all the Irish folk songs as well and a lot of the rebel songs things like that mm-hmm. they are politicized we've yeah, been a political that, I mean, country for years that, that's what yeah politicized uh, my music is to, to me it's totally normal I think it's weird to have music that isn't politicised at know, all. I, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I don't really have it. Yeah. It'd be weirder if we didn't have a stance on it. Yeah. yeah. In general, a political music is very strange to me. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for talking about that. That no, was great. No um, worries. <laughs> the next thing, not a very natural segue here, but Ooh. I have to talk about this because I've been following your Instagram on this and it's so fucking cool. Your newest group, Bird. Yes. I am pronouncing that correctly, aren't I? Bird, yeah. Because there's it's, two eyes. There's two eyes, but Why it's because eyes? there's 11 of us in the group. Fuck. There you go. There mind are. blown. <laughs> Fuck, did we ever say that? Fuck, I was wondering about that. I was we like, oh, maybe it's like an anagram or something. We haven't ever said that. Because I was going through it. I was yeah. like, B, and what could the two eyes be? Yeah, no. I was no. going through everything. Fuck. There yeah. you are. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so tell us about Bird. So, Bird is an all new 11 piece female traditional music band. Um, It's kind of led by Lisa Canny, who's an incredible harpist and band yeah. player and singer from Mayo. Okay. Um, based in London, but she kind of had this idea, honestly, about six years ago. Oh, wow, okay. Well, actually, maybe dating back to about 10 years ago, but uh, she asked me to join the band okay. about six years ago. Okay. But it never really got moving because of COVID and everything, yeah. so we finally kind of started rehearsing, maybe we had our first rehearsal in January or something. Yeah. Um. And since then we've played like Mandela Hall. We've He's played Mandela recently, yeah. yeah, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, obviously Mandela Hall is it's under the Students Union in Belfast. Yeah. It's a pretty iconic venue. Like yeah, I've seen some is. big bands in Mandela. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was the old Mandela, but still the new Mandela's meant to be even better. That's beautiful, yeah, it's a colossal venue. So we did that in July as part of Belfast Tradfest. And yeah. Was that your first gig in that one? No, no. well we had we played in the London Irish Centre. It was our first okay. Irish gig okay yeah yeah so and then we did a few festivals we did all together <gasps> now how was the Mandela gig by the way how did it go oh it was amazing yeah yeah yeah. it's so like we're all such good friends in the band and like it's just nice to be able to play with such sound people and yeah and the it music's looks- amazing as well Like, yeah tell us about the style of music that comes through then it's pure trad music yeah it's, um, but what does that when you say pure for like people who don't know yeah. trad the term pure trad what would that mean as in uh, we kind of Lisa maybe mentioned the idea of uh, doing something different you know like, you know bands like the Olam and stuff and yeah. like yeah. Um, not that we ever thought about going down that kind of road yeah. but I mean like thought about doing something totally new okay. or doing something totally old like 
Planksty and the Bathy Band yeah, and, yeah. and Moving Hearts, mainly all male bands as well, True. you know? Yeah. So it's all, a lot of like banger, old trad tunes. Just played really fucking well. Yeah, and yeah. Shano songs as well. And uh, there's even an Enya number in there. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, fuck, wait, Enya numbers in there? You can say we're Mark. Oh, my fuck, yeah. They're not the right words, I don't think, but. I, I don't know the words. My yeah. ideology is great, <laughs> Oh, that, and why 11? Is that just the number that happened to be there just by chance? Happened it wasn't a goal? To be there. No, it wasn't a goal. Okay. It actually would, it makes things way more chaotic with 11 people. The try and, group, yeah. To try and book like, gigs for 11 people is a big yeah. feat. Like, but um, but and, it's worth it. Yeah, I think someone mm. described that as a super group as well. So it you're all just, very experienced musicians. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we've been all individually been building up our own careers for a few years. Yeah. And, um, like some of the people in the band, I mean, they're everyone's incredible in their own right, and everyone brings yeah. something different to the table as well. Like, uh, Kira Murphy, the fiddle player, one of the fiddle players, there's five, I think. Um, she designs the some of the outfits and stuff. And the outfits like, are class, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been work with a lot of Irish designers and stylists, okay. and it's one of Lisa's goals as well is to have like, um, as much like local, um, yeah, like participation as possible yeah. you know so it's all been Irish designers mostly female designers actually maybe all female designers as well um, so yeah it must be so much fun as well to go into a group of that ex- level of musicians and just join in and play with them it's incredible because yeah. if you don't yeah, it's just yeah. great crack isn't it yeah it's amazing and yeah. how do you decide what tunes you're going to do we kind of a small number of us workshop the ideas and um, actually I'm just back from a rehearsal yesterday we were oh, down really? in Longford yeah um, workshop and some new ideas because yeah, you're based all over the place aren't you so, mm, so yeah all over the place so we were in Longford rehearsing wow. just bouncing ideas off each other and okay. that's the great thing about it as well is that like everyone has something different to bring to the table and yeah it's great yeah and the costumes the last are the, the outfits are costumes that's mm. a total wrong word well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that downgrades it a wee bit I, I didn't mean know. that uh, the outfits I'll edit that out my editing team will get that <laughs> uh the outfits the last time I saw was all the white outfits yeah we're is kind that... of we're going with creams and blacks and okay. maybe the odd pop of colour and stuff like that okay so that's going to be a running thing then is it yeah, yeah. yeah. and any relation to actual birds or is that just the name no <laughs> just the name because okay. we're okay. all birds is that what it was yeah, yeah as well okay I thought, yeah, cause it's an all female group as well yeah, yeah we're okay. all birds yeah <laughs> yeah because what did I see I saw an interview with one of the guys talking about it they were saying like obviously there is there's shows like Celtic Woman and stuff that tour mm-hmm. like there has been a lot of female musicians in Irish music but it is very dated sometimes representation of women and yeah see Irish we all music. yeah it's we're all just ourselves we all just love the crack we all uh, love Irish music yeah and we can fucking play it to a number of leave of a standard <laughs> yeah but so that's, that's all it. you need yeah that's all we just need just rock it the fuck mm-hmm. and any gigs coming up anything to plug while we're at it then well yeah we're gonna be doing a gig as part of uh, Dublin Trad Fest I think formerly Temple Bar Trad Fest I'll okay. need to double check that um, it's going to be us and Dudanen as well it's on January 24th I'm pretty okay. sure um, I'm not sure of the venue but you'll find that out on New York time probably as well yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. awesome yeah. Mm-hmm. and what have you got coming up in the next sort of few weeks to months it's you're an incredibly busy person yeah, I, know that, yeah. <laughs> I know it's been so hard to actually find, like sit down with you I'm no, but so general, happy that we're able yeah thank to you do as well for doing it it's great no. to find you but. Um, for me I have a gig on Friday up in Donegal as part okay. of a new festival called Dorn Sonar it's in Gidor um, I'm playing with Hurtan awesome and, uh, and then the following week I'm away on tour for three weeks with a oh. band I play with one other band called Afro Cal Sound System oh you do play with Afro Cal yes. Sound System <laughs> fuck I totally forgot that you know yeah. actually one of the funniest things is <laughs> it just came to my head the other week is when we were doing the sessions mm. uh, the pub I do it in Cologne is a like, proper old school Irish bar it's a yeah. from Cork it runs it run like a proper wee Irish bar you know, it looks it, like this yeah. um, like a real dying art that kind of thing especially mm-hmm. in other countries because it's not you know very sexy for tourists but mm. it is great but just before the session he doesn't have like a CD system or anything he just has a DVD player and the one DVD he always puts on is Africa Sound System <laughs> Live and I was like fuck where have I been reading that name recently That's I was so like fun. someone I know has been playing with Africa Sound System <laughs> so it was like one of the older sets but how did you get involved with Africa Sound System um, so yeah they've been going since 1998 a like, long time yeah yeah, yeah. and um, there's a flute player and singer called Raina Conley incredible vocalist and flute player and just an all round fucking legend she's so much crack she lives over in Manchester actually. Okay. but she played with them for I don't know maybe five or six years maybe okay. longer shorter but she is taking a break um, because she works with two other bands okay. The Breath and Honeyfeet 
Um, so she rang me up one day and was like, do you want to you want to take over from me in fuck. Africa Sound System? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? You damn right, I do, yeah. yeah so we, I'm assuming you were familiar with them before then. Oh my yeah. god, of course. Yeah. I was like, uh, hold the phone. Yes, ah, yeah. I was buzzing to get the call. So, do you remember your first gig with them? First gig we did was in Sicily last summer, and it was when all the fires were going on. Oh, why? Right it was enough. 49 degrees. Holy fuck. So it wasn't a fun gig at Especially all. Especially for Irish people, Jesus Christ. Fucking hell, it was crazy. But we actually, we were supposed to fly into, I can't remember the name of the airport, but the airport t- went on fire, one of the terminals. So we had to fly to the other end of the fuck. island, get a bu- four hour bus over. Um, and there was just fires all over the island. It was insane heat. Whoa. So it was a really talk about like the baptism of fire yeah, for the first Jesus gig with Christ, someone yeah. yeah and then we couldn't fly out of that airport because the fire was still yeah, ongoing okay. and then we drove through the whole island with just seeing fires here there everywhere it was crazy oh. heat it was insane yeah. i think it might have hit 50 degrees at one that point. is why it was an outdoor gig or an indoor gig it was an outdoor gig Fucking hell. yeah it was really intense so it was how do you play a 50 degree heat? Like I wouldn't... You just have to do it. You don't yeah. have to fucking go Fuck. for it. So it's quite literally a baptism of fire, but yeah. we got through it anyways. Okay. That was the most important thing. So. And what kind of venues were you playing? Um, We've done, we've only done two gigs since then. Okay. Uh, last summer. And then this whole year has been working up to this tour. Okay. Yeah. So we did uh, like a medieval kind of festival in Germany somewhere. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. I don't know what part. I can't remember. And then we did. They often come to Germany. Africa Science has been to Germany yeah, loads yeah, of times yeah, over the years. Yeah. They love it over there. Yeah. Um, and then we did w- Wickham Folk Fest over in, in things, England. Yeah. Yeah. Near Where's Southampton. Aye. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, we did those three gigs last summer, and then it was kind of my induction to it all. And now we're gonna do this tour, uh, and we leave. <sighs> I leave on October 6th. So I'm okay. really, really well, looking forward to it. Where's the tour to. going? Um, it's all England and Scotland. Okay. So I think we start in London. And I think we've got 15 dates all in all. So Mad. all kind of all around England. And then uh, we've a few in Edinburgh and... Sorry. In Edinburgh and a couple of other spots in Scotland. Class. Mm-hmm. Are you buzzing for it? Um, yeah, I yeah. can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Do you get any like big moments in a flute solos or any of that kind of stuff? Um, I have a big song, one big song. This time it's called Magical Love. I think it's. But one... you'll be singing. Yeah, yeah, nice. I'm singing as well and playing the flute. So, um, it's a song that Rena Conley wrote. I'm pretty sure, and it's it's a banger song. So. <gasps> Do you get nervous for those kind of gigs? Do you know what? No, see, with the bigger audiences, yeah. it's a lot easier. Really? And there's about ten people in the band, so it's and there's a big backing track as well, and okay. it's like. The music is class, like so. It's there's a lot of pressure taken off it with that. Whereas yeah. if you're doing a solo set, um, acoustically in front of forty people, you can be like, oh, your heart's in your really? mouth. Really, you would get more nervous for that than you yeah, would. Yeah, fuck okay. yeah. I mean, like a gig in front of like maybe like five thousand people is definitely easier to do than. Is that because you just can't really? It's just you can't really see, see anyone. It's, it's yeah. just like. Yeah, and yeah, and people are usually a bit louder and having the crack and stuff. And okay. Or if it was an intimate gig, I'd be a lot more intimidated. For oh sure. yeah, I suppose when you go into those bigger gigs, well, the audience can have a drink and they can mm, make yeah, a bit of noise exactly. as well. Yeah, yeah. But the dead silence of like a really small intimate gig is what mm-hmm. really, yeah. Yeah, people are really like listening. You can yeah. hear a pin drop. Those are beautiful gigs as they well. They are. But it the can be, be nerve wracking sometimes. I fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I hate about classical music is we never get to do that. I've said for years we should let our audiences go and have a pint during the gig. But they never let you. So they let Seriously? you drink at half time and then let you drink before. So people get a few drinks at half time. Then the second half people tend to appreciate the music a wee bit more because they've had a few pints. Bit drunk. Yeah. But everyone's fucking silent during a classical music gig. Fuck. All the time. That's why we do it with Irish music and people are singing along. You're like, this is great. Yeah, it's good crack. If I drop a note, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> yeah. You can stand up on the table and you start throwing things. It's great. Mm. I remember the first time I ever gigged with an Irish band was with Zach, actually. Mm. Um, we were like 18. We lived together in Cardiff for a while. We were studying there. We were playing on Paddy's Day. We did like four different gigs. We started a wee trio together. And by the last gig, we were doing like the Irish Society or something in a, in a bar. And I remember I was fucking starving because we didn't get anything to eat all day. They promised to give us chips. And they didn't chips. have any chips, and they brought like one on the stage for me. And I remember the whole audience was singing like the Wild Rover, some shit like that. And I was just like, I took my phone out and just started eating chips on stage. Like, is it great? I yeah. getting paid to play music and I'm eating chips and a video. Like, it was Liam Gallagher at Wembley. <laughs> I was like taking selfies, and I was like, this is great, man. Classical music doesn't yeah. know what it's missing. No words of classical music. That's <laughs> so that fun. doesn't happen at every traditional Irish gig, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I've done a few. People get the chips out on stage. Oh yeah. Um, 
African scientist, and that is fucking class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a great tour. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, anybody who has a listen to this should really check them out. Mm-hmm. In Germany, they're so well known. Yeah, they're yeah. huge over there. Yeah, hopefully we'll be back in Germany at some stage yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we Pop do, down to Cologne. okay, I'll suggest. There, Cologne. If you can suggest, yeah, or anywhere <laughs> yeah. around there, just somewhere where I can come down and see it. That'd be great. Yeah. And um, what else? Anything else coming up before um, Christmas? Any major stuff? I'm trying to think. We've got. Um, the well, we've a couple of gigs to be honest. There's a couple of gigs I can't really announce, just, okay? Yeah, okay. But um, we're gonna be pl- oh, wait, no, I can't actually say that either. Sorry, okay. Everyone's on the edge of their seats there. Yeah, there's a couple of gigs that are um, not released yet. Um, no, I a couple of gigs in November, I can't really say about okay. Um, I have some gigs in Mulligans in Amsterdam, and ah. yeah, it's just uh. I don't know if you've been to Mulligan's Great Irish Bar in Amsterdam. I've been to one Irish Bar in Amsterdam. I don't Could know have been Mulligan's. Yeah, is it yeah. like proper authentic or is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah proper, proper authentic. authentic. I went to, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, doing a few gigs in I there. I've been going to Amsterdam. What, what was the, what's the connection there? Oh, people have been going over to Mulligan's for years. They've always brought Irish really? musicians over for weekends. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they have a big long link um, and connection if they've been doing that oh, for I years. Oh, I that. Yeah, it's a great bar. Anyone listening from Amsterdam or... Not from Amsterdam, check it out. Oh, I went in Amsterdam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mulligans, there you yeah, are. Are you going one. over as a solo artist there for that one? Or are you going over just with a couple of people I play with, a couple of friends. Um, my boyfriend Tommy, so he's a great boron player, so we're going over. Okay. So we're playing for the weekend, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, okay. Mm-hmm. And obviously you're on social media, yeah. all that kind of stuff, so people find it there. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> Mulu on social media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Mulu yeah, Kjol. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Kjol being the Irish word for music, I should yes. make that clear. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Because me being a Protestant, I only learned that like four <laughs> years ago. So yeah. never too late to learn. It isn't. Thank mm. you. Um, okay, before I go, I do have some quick fire questions that I normally ask my guests for a go bit for of fun. Mm-hmm. How do you adapt the first question? Because you're the first trap player I've had on. I love that. So, I'm so happy to be the first trap player here. I know. I need to get some more on as well. But yeah, yeah. I started well. The, the bar said hi, hi now. Thank you. Um, who else do I want to get on? Ah, oh, fine. Brenham Hall would be great. Brenham Hall would be good. Yeah. And I don't even know Eva McGowan, but we're trying to get her on for a while as well. She does mm. bit both. She has a lot of trap and a name. lot of heard the name, uh, yeah. classical as well. And then hi one, the guy Stephen from Hurton. Is he the same Stephen that was on the Caps record? <gasps> Stephen Lachran, yeah, yeah. The same one? Yes. Yeah. yeah He's an incredible flute player. Like. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been banging on so yeah. much about kneecap on this podcast. Because I went to see the movie the other night as well. It was fucking <laughs> class. Oh, it's amazing. Because it's not out in Germany until January. Fuck. Yes, I was going to say you're not getting to see it in Germany until no, January. No, because they have to fucking dub it because all Germans go on dubs and it's a pain in the hole to dub it in English, never mind in fucking Irish. Mm. So by the time they pay someone to dub it in two languages, it'll be January before it's out. Okay, right. That's have a you shame. Ever played? You, you know the kneecap lads? Oh, yeah, they're good oh. friends of mine. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Okay, anyway, right. So the first question I had to adapt because normally it's your favourite flute concerto, but I'm assuming you don't listen to many flute concertos. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you what is your favourite flute tune? That's a really, really it is, difficult it's question. question. I'll say one of my favourite sets at the minute, of tunes even. at the minute, yeah. Um, maybe because I've been over in Brittany so recently, is a set by a Breton flute player called Jean Michel Vaillant. Okay. Two tunes that he wrote, one called Chemo's Jig and one called Matilda's Jig. Okay, I'll check them out then. Great. Yeah, they're incredible. Okay, second question. Do you remember the first flute album that you bought? I remember the first whistle album that I Ooh. ever got. My mum bought me it, or Santa bought me it, ah, I yeah, thought at the yeah. time. It um, was a Miri Bergen whistle album. I got that when I was maybe like a nine or ten, class. maybe a bit younger. On CD, was it? On CD, yeah. yeah. You still have the CD? I still have the CD, oh, yeah. Class. yeah. There you are. <laughs> um, do you remember the first album in general that you bought? Was it the same thing or was it something... I think one of the first albums I bought was maybe a Beatles album actually when I was I was a big Beatles fan from when I was about 11 or 12 seriously because I watched A Hard Day's Night the film with my older sister Lorna and uh, I just became obsessed with them I think one of the first albums I ever bought with my own money was A Hard Day's Night wow yeah. that's really cool I'm yeah. a bit disappointed in that yeah because other <laughs> people say like Steps or West Ever Boys I'm like that's fucking great the Beatles are great <laughs> I'm a huge Beatles fan but I only discovered the Beatles when I was like 17 no I've loved them for years oh, that's a really my cool confirmation answer. name is Jude after Hey Jude <laughs> oh okay yeah okay great okay do you have a go-to karaoke song Yes, Valerie, Amy Winehouse. You're, you really answer quick. I love this. This is great. <laughs> Valerie, that's a classic one. Yeah, I was in uh, Croatia with my boyfriend and his brother. 
um, and his girlfriend a few weeks ago, and we did karaoke, and I did Amy Winehouse yeah. Valerie. Do you love a bit of karaoke? You would, yeah. Yeah, well, I, if I've had enough drinks, yeah. Yeah, because you're like a singer as well, so do <laughs> karaoke. But it's, it's actually worse when you're a singer and you do karaoke. Yeah, because everyone expects you to do it, don't they? Yeah, as well. and then if you're Pretty doing shy, a bit yeah. shit, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. worse. Oh, right, well, for fuck's sake, yeah. Who's paying her, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, if you could switch instruments but be as good as you are on the flute, what would you switch to? Ooh, that's a tough one. I maybe. Maybe the Ellen Pipes. Ellen Pipes are class, yeah. Yeah, I love the Ellen Pipes. Although, oh, yeah, they're fucking hectic as well because... They're a nightmare they're carry so, on as yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. There's so many different components to them, but I think yeah. Ellen Pipes. Have you ever played them? You I go did. With them I used point? to play them when I was younger, but I never really got to a high level. Okay. Because so. the finger, is it quite similar to the flute? It's a little bit different. I do know the scale, like, but uh, it, it's slightly different. Okay. Yeah. I never got a chance to play it, so I'd love to give them a go. Yeah. Someday. Okay. Uh, oh, if you could have a career outside of music, what would you do? Fuck. Nothing. <laughs> no, nothing, just go nothing. to Dolan. If I could have a career outside of music. Um, what did you want to be when you were away? Wanted to be a fashion designer, a seamstress. There you are. It's because I watched Ugly Betty. Did you ever see the TV oh, show? fuck. That's a lot of memory. Yeah, and Christina. Um, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was a seamstress and I always loved that. That or a chef were my two things when I was younger. Okay. But uh, I wouldn't like to be a chef now. It's so stressful. I guess you realise how hard it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You still do a bit of cooking though? Are you yeah, interested in yeah. I love cooking. My dad's a great cook, so he kind of taught me. Oh, really? Okay. He says, is yeah. he a chef or? No, he's not oh. a chef. No, no. But he definitely could have been if he wanted to. Oh. But I think he was the same. Maybe thought it'd be too stressful. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's, it's a horrible job, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good answer as well. Okay, two questions left. If you could have a pint with any musician alive or dead, who would you have a pint with? John Lennon. John Lennon, straight in. Straight in. Yeah. And I know, I know, yeah, I'm just a huge John Lennon fan. But no matter obviously what Obviously your favourite Beatle then, is he? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he always has been, always will be. And he, that has to be my answer. Since I've been no age, okay. he's just been... Uh, That's somebody. a very good answer, yeah. And I know he's controversial enough, right? Because yeah. of his ex-girlfriend yeah. or his ex-wife, Cynthia and... I'm not going to get into that, but... I wouldn't worry. I don't think any of them listen to this podcast. <laughs> okay. Like in case Cynthia that. Lennon is listening. Yeah. Really sorry. <laughs> if she is, is there any sponsors this <laughs> podcast? Um, yeah. I got into the Beatles a bit later, but mm. I've always had a real soft spot for George. George. I love George Harrison. I, if I was yeah. going for a pint with the Beatles, it would definitely be... John would be my least favourite to go for a pint with. Fair enough. Because Paul's a Fair sweetheart. Enough. And Ringo's Ringo. Ringo would be fun. Yeah, no, I'm a big John Lennon fan. Like yeah. I love them all, but John Lennon just takes it. That would be a good one. Did you ever see that film? Oh, what would you call it? The one where your man hits his head and then he wakes up and everyone's forgotten the music of the Beatles. Oh, Hot Tub Time Machine. No, that's <laughs> Sorry. a class film. That's a class film. Isn't it? Oh, wait, fuck. Oh my God, yes. Sorry, it's an actual with, yeah. Beatles film. Yeah. Hot Tub Time Machine. I'm sure that happens in the Hot Tub Time Machine. I just, yeah, <laughs> maybe does. Yeah, there's a running thing here people hitting their heads. Yeah. But then what do you call it? It's where, like, is it called e- Yesterday, maybe? Is it? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. I think it was a Danny Boyle film. Did Do you know why I, I didn't even watch it? No. Shy. I know. Was it? Maybe shy. Fair yeah. enough, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't miss seen, anything. Well, no spoiler, but it's kind of a spoiler, but uh, at the very end, John Lennon's in it. Because obviously the Beatles didn't exist with John Lennon, it's just like a dude. And it was a little bit disappointing. I was mm. like, ah, oh, I don't know. I like the, the image of John Lennon leaving as he is. Yeah, fair. Um, fair. Yeah, don't watch that film. I won't, I won't. Um, and the last question then, what is your favourite drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? And then also, what would you drink with John Lennon if you went out for a pint with him? Favourite drink is harp, and I would drink a pint of harp. If are I'm you a harp drinker? Yeah, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, harp is a great beer. That is one I miss so much over in Germany. Just lager in general, I guess, but uh, yeah. Oh, harp's got harp. a real kick to it. Like, harp's got a real... Yeah. Yeah. There's something about harp has got real something about it so harp if you're listening you want to sponsor Fuck. this podcast <laughs> yeah say that directly into the car yeah. <laughs> harp harp do sponsor a lot of podcasts as well I've seen they're knocking about they're, they're putting money go, in here yeah. we go. oh fuck I would love a sponsor from harp that'd be so great this be a, you need to be doing a harp podcast so not a flute podcast yeah you need to be and then I could do the instrument harpist. as well yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah do you know what I read the other day as well when the harp goes to the right in any kind of logo get us on it I know and then, the, and the Irish <laughs> flag yeah it had to go to the left yeah and yeah. the passports and all across the other side as well yeah it's fucking bad guinness on everything <laughs> yeah for guinness for on the world are you not a guinness drinker no uh i do like guinness okay but i just i'm not a i just prefer yeah. laggers over stouts have you had like babies or murphy's and all those ones i actually i think i've had one pint of babies in my life babies are fucking class yeah people love oh, it like babies is lit yeah there's two places about it. the sunflower does it now and I want to say the Chucky York does it as well. I think yeah, I heard. well that's good because all Diageo's prices are just going like skyrocketing. Through the rocking. fucking roof. And then the places like Sunflower and stuff, the prices are still steady. They are. You know, you can get a pint in there for like four forty, four sixty. That's wild. 
Yeah, which would have been normal here just pre COVID, but now pints are like five fifty. To oh, six I quid. six quid a pint here, easy. Yeah, although not here. Yeah, no, Madden's I know Madden's, Madden's for a long bar. time is very proud of the fact that it was the cheapest pint to get us in the city centre. I don't know if that's still the case. I doubt it's still the case, to be honest, but I'm not too definitely sure. Although it's still pretty, yeah, it's definitely the best in it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, this one or no, I won't promote other bars in this no, podcast. No, no, Madden's, Madden's bar. definitely does the best in yeah. Belfast city centre, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, is there anything you want to plug before we go? I think that's everything. Social International to Your Flute Day is next Friday. Yeah. The October 4th. Not sure when this is going to be coming out. It'll come out this Friday. So what days? So a week from when this comes out. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, you can find me on Instagram. Mulu Kyo. Yeah. Yeah. And Bird and Hurtan and also have their own. Hurtan. Africa's not a system. Ah, system, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there a hashtag for International Food, Toot Your Flute Day? That's no, a bit of a mouthful to get we, a hashtag, isn't it? Yeah, we've just been calling it Toot Your Flute Day. So maybe we could do something like that. Okay. Yeah. Hashtag Toot Your Fruit Day will launch that then. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much. This has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank uh, you. Thank so you very much for, this, for listening, everybody. And yeah, cheerio. Clap. <laughs>